Good morning. I'm Rami. We bring you the new generation of 360 vision. Why do we need a new generation? Uh, that's because the old generation doesn't work. This is an example of border protection on the US-Mexican border. They missed a car coming over the border fence. Remember what's going on there? Um, there are thousands of kilometers of the border. That's a lot, so imagine what's going on there. Now, this is an example of what the interior of an armored vehicle looks like. Here, it's an army vehicle, but it could also be a low enforcement vehicle. You can either be armored or in trouble. You need to be protected and therefore you blind yourself. We need a new generation of vision because we always miss something. We need to see what happened around us while being protected. What you see with normal camera is always just a small window to the outside world. Point it somewhere and you will miss what happened behind. Point it behind and you will miss what happens in front of you. Now, you could try to see more, in, uh, more by installing many more cameras, each pointing into a different direction. But we have heard it is too complicated and unreliable to be available solution. So, what would the solution look like? To find that out, we have asked many users. They told us what the critical requirements are. A clean view around 360 on the fly processing, high resolution and frame rate, fast deployment and ease of use, independent field of view for each different user, and combination of day and night vision. We spent three years in the lab and developed exactly what they were looking for. The 360 in one system meets all the requirements at a competitive price. Some highlight are combined infrared and visible sensor, real time rendering, full motion panoramic frame rate with a resolution of up to 4K. We tested the system in real trials. We found that even if someone invests an amount of time to make a smaller multi-camera, it still doesn't meet the requirement. It lacks critical ingredient. Real-time vision, combined day and, vis and night vision, and a small footprint. Compression, the 360 in one is robust, simple, and efficient. We told you about the user. We build the type of vision to their requirements. You will get superior situational awareness because you will have a clean view around 360 without blind spot. Perspective mode is great for persons. Panorama mode is great for machine vision, and it could show an integrate optical zoom. Remember, we are providing completely 360 view all around. We can present it anywhere, like on video wall distributed over several monitors, or through a head mounted display with head tracking, where you see section of the 360 in the visor. Here is an example of uh, night vision. And day vision. Thank you very much.
Thanks very much, Rami. I also just want to thank you for co your consideration in falling down after your presentation and not before. That was, uh, <laughs> okay, that was 360 degrees. The next up is uh, Duke Robotics. Hello everyone, my name is Razia Atuar and I'm from Druk Robotic Systems. And I want to talk to you today about the war on terror. This is the problem we're dealing with today. Terrorists are working within crowded environment areas. The using population is human shields. And we have problems to get these bad guys. We have few options. One of them, we can use airstrike. But you don't want to do that because of the collateral damage that would be too high. The other option, we can use our standard tactics, which means we need to send in at least a battalion to get into these guys. So we thought, what if? What if we could give our troops a new ability? The ability to be a sniper anywhere, anytime, with a pinpoint accuracy, without risking lives. Let me show you what we created in the past two years. In order to achieve that, we had to overcome many challenges. For example, first we have to create a stabilization system that will be small, as you can see, light, and most important, absorb the recoil of the weapon system. As a matter of fact, what we have here is a six degrees of freedom parallel robotic system that works in real time, which means it weighs less than four kilograms and can take up to nine kilograms of payload. We can mount it anywhere. You've just seen it on a drone, but it can also be mounted on a ATV, a boat, or even a utility, utility helicopter. It will still work the same. Because of sophisticated software that we've developed and algorithm, which means a robot will eliminate any movement that you get, either from the platform or the payload that it carries. To sum it up, we brought a sniper that can be anywhere, anytime, without risking life to our troops. Just take the control unit, and as a matter of fact, if you don't have to be in line of fire, you don't, you don't send your troops in. You can choose your weapon, it could be an M4, SR-25, or even a 40 millimeter grenade launcher. You just put it up in the air, scan, lock, track, and fire at will. As you can see it, our drone, the drone is a commercial drone here, but a platform is here ready to use. And about our current situation, we got a recent Recently, we got first orders from the IDF, and we're working, um, as you can see it now, on the next level of a drone. We can 
have the ability to carry it on for 25 minutes, this payload. About our team, my colleague and co-founders, Amir Kadosh, is an ex-secret service agent and he is a lawyer with expertise in commercial law. My colleague and friends, I give our own, is a mechanical engineer, expertise in robotics and control, formerly worked in Rafael and Elbit Systems, Myself, I'm Lieutenant Colonel in Reserve, former Special Forces Commander, Battalion Commander, and worked in AMI as Business Manager. We are Duke. Thank you very much. Razi, thanks very much. Um, maybe if you leave that with us, we'll use it in case people forgot to switch off their uh, cell phones. Okay. Next up is French fry. French fry? Okay. Razi, I think you have my vote. But turn it 90 degrees that way, please. Good morning, my name is Amir, CEO at Fringify. And we do open source visual intelligence location analytics. Our social networks contain a growing amount of information describing illegal and hostile activity. Uh, the abundance and availability of social platforms online makes it easy for hostile organization to distribute agendas, recruit operatives, and send intimidation messages across the globe. Now, the amount of uh, published media grows exponentially. While existing IT solutions, mining for open source retentions, may work at scale, the information itself in is analyzed manually. So infinite amounts of uh, incriminating open source intelligence are therefore useless for um, law enforcement and counter-terrorism activity because they are not being leveraged efficiently and on time. In a certain instance, the U.S. has been able to uh, take a social network feed, analyze its location, and launch an airstrike. Now, this is a very high-profile course of action that took meaningful an analytic capabilities. Such examples are very scarce. We want to be able to leverage any relevant information for real-time location analysis and visualization of suspicious activity so we can reduce the short and the feedback cycle to minimum at the signal loss to minimum. We develop location analytic systems for open source visual information. We take visual feeds in the form of what's sensitive to the customer and cross them against public or proprietary databases of imagery. The results are clusters of location and pinpoint location that corresponds to the visual match. For example, one demonstration we did in New York City is to locate illegal real estate listings based on web published information. That works in the scale of a large city. Another operational example that we demonstrated to a certain intelligence agency is reconstructing the path of a vehicle based on visual uh, analysis of a dashboard camera, of course, without the geographic metadata. The recognition system, the recognition sequence, constructed the map on the right. Now our technology takes essential elements of information, the objectives of the customer, and cross them against infinite amount of public visual information. We do that using our proprietary landmark recognition methods, of which you won't find in any academic publication or patent claim. We develop them all in-house. Now the product of the system may be pinpoint location, clusters of location-based activity, and mobile extension of the recognition platform to field operatives or infantry. Now, reducing the majority of the recognition calculation to a mobile client is one of the most challenging, uh, um, one of the biggest challenges technically, and our technology is designed specifically for that. We are an early stage company with prototype technology and no commercial products yet. Today, we can operate in the scale of a large city and against structured web-based databases. 
the R&D program that uh, we are trying to finance is first to expand the service to wherever we can call for public information and create the global geovisual repository of places. Next is to uh, improve the recognition system to handle any visual signal and noise and to extend the recognition platform for mobile platforms like the mobile demo you saw on the right. So field of operatives could access critical target information on the site and in real time. In the future, we want to use aerial and satellite information for unlimited coverage anywhere in the world. We are a three-person founding team out of the Israeli Air Force, airmen and intelligence personnel, transforming concept from existing aerial weapon system to the street level. Now, as in the Air Force, our jobs are as if to mine for target information, machine learning, staff recognize them in real time, computer vision, and myself, all the rest. So please come see us at the, at the exhibition. If you're a customer, tell us about your problems. If you have money, we'll tell you about ours. Thank you very much. Okay, next up we have imagery. Okay. Good morning, everybody. My name is Nitsa Inan, and I'm from imagery. Imagery is, in a nutshell, gives any device the ability to understand visual information. So all of us know, sorry, all of us know that this object is a pistol. And that one, a pistol as well. So is this object. We have three different objects, and yet we give all of them the same meaning. The reason for that is we, as human beings, we have visual perception capabilities. We can see objects and then we can understand their meaning. So we can take similar objects, group them together, and give them one label. It's a long process for us and it takes one third of our brain to do it. And we begin the process as babies. We build internal models of objects and we keep updating the models every time we see an object. But for computers, it's a much more difficult challenge. Computers see the world in zero and ones. They don't have intuition. They don't understand the context of an image. So they lack visual perception capabilities like we do. The result is that we are surrounded by many smart devices from drones, surveillance cameras, mobile phones, wearables, all of them can process visual and yet they cannot understand what they see. And they miss critical information that can save lives. They don't understand if a man is walking in the street with a gun, if a logo of ISIS is uploaded to social media, if a masked man entered the airport, and much more information. And that's where imagery steps in. We are a team of computer vision professionals who wants to solve this problem and to give any device the ability to understand vision. We were founded by Adam Ghazali, who is a brain researcher, and by Majid Jube, who is a talented developer. And for three years, we developed a technology that can be embedded in any device and give any device the ability to understand the visual information. So the way we see the next level in the world is that any surveillance camera will be able to alert us if someone is going with a knife in the street. And any computer will be able to alert us if someone uploaded a video with an exploding belt. And any drone will be able to alert us if it sees abnormal behavior. Our technology is unique for many reasons. 
First, we are cross-platform. We can be embedded in any device. Our engine is very lightweight. It's less than 50 megabytes. And frankly, it's more light than this presentation. So we can embed it anywhere, in wearables, in drones, in surveillance camera, anywhere we want, while our competitors focus on cloud solution that sits in huge data servers. In addition, we can, in images, classify about 30,000 types of objects in high accuracy, and we have a very flexible engine that we can add new category in a few minutes. So we don't need internet connectivity. We can do the process real time anywhere. I would like to share with you an example of a video stream. We were asked to detect whether there is weapon or there is no weapon in this video. And you can see the detection in the subtitles. It should run. It's very slow. Yes, because this is not the real-time process of the video, but you can see in the subtitles in yellow when our engine detected that there is no weapon, and in red when there is a weapon. Another example that I want to share with you is a POC that we made with a body-worn camera manufacturer in the U.S. They asked us, to implement our uh, technology in the body-worn camera. And they wanted only the relevant data to be sent from the field to the headquarters. They didn't want all the video stream to be sent to the servers, but they wanted the classification to be made in the cameras and then get only the relevant data and alerts. So this is the way a video stream from body-worn camera looks like. We can see a very hectic scene the, ma the camera moves really fast, and still our engine can detect the people and the objects in the scene, put a bounding box, and track those uh, persons and objects in the scene. So, a few words about our status. We began to develop the technology in 2013. 2015, we got our, our, our investment from Taquin Labs and from the chief scientist. Now we're a part of the Microsoft Accelerator. We are working on expanding our video capabilities from a few hundreds of detectors in the video to a few thousand, like we have in the images. And we are working to build a web tool that will enable any user to customize our engine to its own needs. Next year, our plan is to open a U.S. office and to support the first leading customers. This year, we have a POCs and pilots with a few customers. And for that, we are now raising our seed, our round A. That's us. Thank you very much. Next up is Leroy. Okay, <clears throat> good morning. I will start with a question, why the sky is blue? And the common answer of maybe the children is that because of the ocean is, uh, is blue, but the real answer is that it's because of the scattering effects when sunlight hits the air molecules. 
So we develop um, a new camera that captures the scratching e effect and with uh, polarization technology. And we're using this for two main applications related to counter-terror. First, we are going to show you that we are developing application for IED detection, one of the most problem for counter-terror and maneuver of forces. And on the other end, we are uh, developing application for navigation and orientation. These both applications are based on the same technology. My name is Dudi. I'm a former colonel in the Israeli army. I was the head of the R&D on procurement of the Israeli army. Um, our innovation is based on uh, three uh, core technologies. We fabricate a new uh, diffractive uh, nanoscale optic and we use light field optics with uh, um, image processing uh, uh, imager and all this development is based on the latest uh, embedded hour, our hardware that we have uh, in the market low power and high, high rate. Our algorithm uh, uh, is based on three things. First, it's based on the atmospheric science, and I will elaborate a little bit about it later, about celestial uh, uh, navigation and quantum mechanized. And from all both three, we are calculating the angle and the degree of the polarization. We are doing it in the, all the spectrum from visual to IR uh, bands. And in this, we can get, sorry, in, in this case, we can get I SNR ratio, something that is really uh, needed when you want to detect IDs, for example. So those, these are the, the main uh, application. When we are talking about detection of IED, the, the ones that are dealing with it, you know that there is no silver bullet that can detect an IED. So we add a layer that can detect IED if it, for example, under a camouflage. At the same time, from the same technology, we are developing an orientation device that can help the warrior to navigate or to, 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 to do the target acquisition without a GPS. A few examples about IEDs, and I, I, I won't get into details, but we are trying to help the warriors, to help the troops to find the spot that you cannot see with a, a regular eye. We, as I, I uh, told you before, we are doing it in ISNR uh, performance and in real time and robust performance. And now I will go to the navigation. Today, when we navigate, we use few of these means, but each of one of them have a lake. And you have you, all the example, for example, for you have the sexan that needs a line of sight. We, have, we are using the IMUs, but the IMUs are a little bit expensive and they have a drift. We are using the GPS. The GPS uh, is no adding capability and at the same time you can jam a GPS. And we know the magnetic compass, the advantages and the disadvantages of the magnetic compass. Um, <clears throat> our technology is based on a research made by my partner Shlomi that based on uh, uh, sci uh, uh, space science and learning a little bit from the animals. And in this way, um, we convert the atmospheric light into a polarization map and building our camera. So at the end, we get all the advantage from the beginning is to get the eye accuracy for navigation, one milliradian accuracy, we are doing it without GPS. We are doing it in the real time. We're working one hour before uh, sunrise and one, until one hour uh, until, uh, after sunset and in moonlight, in moonlight days. Here you can see an example of our compass in one of the tests with, that we've done in the last year. And you can see the accuracy down. And now about the application. What we want to do at the end is that any warrior in the field can have a target acquisition system that work, will work very fast and very accurate. Today, there is not such, such a element when you are talking about special forces in the, in the tactical level. Um, 
and this application will be uh, fully uh, operational until the end of the and then on the year. About our status, we are working on a prototype and on embedded our, uh, <coughs> sorry, hardware that is ready to go to a mobile application. This is uh, one of the samples that we are doing. We are after a, a good and successful test made in by the MOD and Raphael, starting an application for UGV and ID detection application. About our team, uh, my, my partner Shlomi lead a, a, a great a, a team of scientists, physics scientists, and myself with the experience of, in R&D uh, for the Army, building together the application and trying to bring the solution, as we showed you before. This is our compass. We will try to help you to find the North. Thank you very much. I was trying to find my way through Tel Aviv this morning. Natira. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is Natira Technologies. Okay, let's, uh, let's try and do this without a mic. No, no? Okay, okay. <laughs> said we'll try. Okay, thank you very much for uh, having me. My name is Isaac Littman and I'm the CEO of uh, Natira Technologies. We saw amazing companies and, and I think that everyone can agree that uh, terrorist attacks are becoming more and more a strategic threat to the uh, world. But one of the main challenges, and I think that we also saw it today, is that when we are trying to locate a terrorist, when we try to pinpoint the culprit, to flag the suspect, you know, usually they don't wear funny hats and carry flags when they are trying to commit crimes. And when we are looking at the crowd, they try to blend in and we need to single them out. How can we single them out? Sensing, sensing technologies. And when we analyzed that problem, we came to a conclusion that the right solution to that problem is by using a terahertz sensing. Why terahertz? Terahertz is an unutilized part of the electromagnetic spectrum. It's between the infrared light and the microwave. And it hasn't been used, although there were many researches done uh, to date, it was not being implemented sufficiently because of lack of sensors, because to turn this into a commercial product was a main challenge until today. The advantages of terahertz sensing are numerous. For once, it is safe, non-ionizing. It is directional, so it can be aimed at a person or at an intersection or at a location. Clothes are transparent, so we can see concealed weapon, and it also has molecular spectral fingerprint, which means that we can track or we can sense explosives, gases, or drugs. Sounds like a game. But, and here's come the but, there is always a but, when we are looking at the actual implementation today, we are talking about a huge form factor, a very expensive price, and a not seamless process. These devices are actually machines. They are implemented, and you can see them at airports. Airports are a strategic location, but today we understand that a terror attack can have strategic meanings not only in airports. Train stations, the Boston bombers, everywhere can have a strategic meaning, even a theater. What can we do in order to take that and to turn it into something that is more available? And our direction is to, to create a terahertz sensing that is, that is built on an abundance of sensors, an array of sensors that are small and can be deployed around us or in the strategic locations so they can sense different things and they can pinpoint, they can show or flag the suspect. And that exactly is what Natira is doing. We have created the world's smallest high performance industrial sensor. And you can see the actual image of the sensor right here. Uh, and you have a pen right next to it to show you what uh, the size is and the di diagram of its sensitivity. The idea is to create a sensor that is small and we'll see the advantages right away. Higher resolution so we can see concealed weapon in details. 
We have small size, so it can be implemented in many areas, cost effective, about 80% cheaper than current solutions and the price will go down. Reliable, of course, and fast, so we can have a seamless process. We don't have to have people standing in line. It can be deployed in, in strategic locations and sense whoever goes by to see what goes on. And of course, passive and active, which means it can work either passively, reading out of background radiation or with the signal generator. We were able to achieve this sensor and this capability, this technology, by utilizing a state-of-the-art technology that was developed by the Hebrew University for over a decade. They also developed an application, a very interesting application. They understood that by sensing the electromagnetic properties of the human skin in the terahertz spectrum, you are getting a lot of very interesting information. And that information entails biometric ID, stress levels, heart rate and respiration. And all this is being done remotely. So think about an array of sensors deployed, deployed around us that can sense explosives, can see concealed weapons, see identification if the person is in the database, and also uh, track stress levels. I think that this will be, will be very um, material in tracking the right person or, or flagging the right suspect. We have a great team. Myself, previously the CEO of Mobileye Aftermarket, but I'm not bringing the brains to the team. Chaim Goldberger, our, CEO, our CTO, previously VP Corporate R&D at Vichy, Professor Yuri Feldman and Dr. Paul Benishai of the Hebrew University, the, the Department of Applied Physics, Johanan Steinberg, Dr. Johanan Steinberg, previously at Raytheon at the Naval Research Center in the US, an expert on sonar and radar uh, algorithm processing, and Dr. Peter Falsi, an expert on terahertz. Current status, as you saw, our alpha generation uh, sensor is accomplished. We are working on the beta, which will be finished by Q4 2016. And we, int we uh, intend to uh, kick off the commercial applications towards the end of 2017, when the idea is that we are supplying the core technology. Instead of using the current machinery, the core technology will be small, will be cost effective, will be reliable, will be sensitive, and this will allow all of our partners to implement the different applications in the field. Thank you very much. Seventeen seconds to spare. Thanks, Isaac. Okay, hello. Duke Robotics should come talk to us later, for sure. I'm Jonathan, co-founder of uh, Regulus X. Imagine a future not far away where drones and robots are a fundamental part of our everyday life. But even today, pro-grade commercial drones are already taking place in the fight on terror used by police, home security, search and rescue, and even military and special forces looking for an affordable solution. But there is a, pro a problem, an alarming one, and it's just starting to surface. Today's drones are super vulnerable. A 50-pound police drone flying over your head with a price tag of $40,000 can be easily intercepted, hijacked, or crashed by anyone with basic technolog technological knowledge and a $40 device. This is a cross-industry problem. GPS spoofing, for example, took the U.S. Customs and Border uh, Protection Agency's drones out of the sky along the Mexican border. And this guy used the $40 device to hack the San Francisco police drones with a price tag of over $30,000. $30, Imagine a terrorist being able to watch a live video feed from a military drone, or upload a new flight plan, or crash it in order to escape the crime scene. Well, it just happened a couple of months ago here in Israel, an amateur hacker from Gaza managed to easily intercept live video feed from IDF drones. 
These weaknesses are not caused by lazy engineers. It's because fully protecting a drone from cyber attacks is not a simple task. Ask DARPA or any military drone manufacturer in the world, they all use third parties in order to help them protect their drones. And it's much harder to do, to do on smaller pro-grade drones used today by both military and homeland security. These small drones have very limited battery power and limited computing power, mostly used to keep the drone in the air. Yet, they're almost as complex as the bigger brothers. They, with zero latency two-way communications, real-time embedded software, analog and digital video links, navigation systems, and autonomous mission capabilities. All these systems are targeted by hackers. This is why it's extremely difficult to fully protect the drone in a cost-effective manner and goes well, well beyond simply adding an encryption library to the drone's core. This is a big system engineering problem. This is where we come in. We have 35 years of combined experience in the IDF and Israel's leading companies doing encryption, military UAVs, robotics, real-time systems, microcontrollers, building, hacking, and flying drones for over 15 years, and managing large-scale projects. Our solution is an external, lightweight, secure subsystem that provides, a, that provides a solution to the most common attack vectors known today. This includes GPS, G, GPS spoofing detection and abnormal system behavior monitoring. We allow to rapidly detect, inform, and correct system performance in response to cyber attacks and to initiate the automatic recovery actions while alerting the operators of an active attack. Real-time connectivity allows for user-friendly interfaces, much like an antivirus program has. And it's all done in a, in a fraction of the price, size, weight, and complexity of the military systems. Our technology is diverse, yet specific for each attack vector. For example, in our revolutionary patentable technology, we use the drone sensor's random noise to generate encryption keys. We developed a unique algorithm that uses mainstream GPS receivers to identify spoofing. We have a simple business model. Working as an OEM for drone companies, most are incapable of designing their own security and offering an aftermarket solution for drone fleets which are not protected. We continue to provide updates based on a recurring model. So, where will the competition prize money go? On the 16th of February 2016, that's four months ago, I've asked you have my co-founder, to join me. Bootstrap bootstrapping in this short time, we achieved some impressive goals. We envisioned and started developing two technological inventions, detecting GPS spoofing and a unique encryption approach for drones, while filing two provisional patents. We have the three most important security researchers of our field supporting us. We've been invited to DEF CON and to cooperate with a leading drone startup. We have a planned meeting with Amazon's primary team. We got to the finals of two cybersecurity competitions. Now, bootstrapping is fun, but still, this money could be a great help for us. We've got it all planned. We could hire our first two engineers, file for two full patents, fly to meetings and conventions in the US, and raise seed money more patiently. And it, of course, will allow us to have a solution ready much quicker. To conclude, drones are just the beginner, beginning. In the future, our technology will be used not just for drones only, but for robots in general. Drones are just a small part of the robot family, and this is where we aim. Thank you. steps. Oops. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. safe breach. okay, next is safe breach.
Um, I'm Gadi Lifshitz, I'm the VP RD at uh, SafeBridge. And uh, in the next few minutes, I'm going to show you how SafeBridge is changing the balance between attackers and defenders by using state of the art offensive, offensive technology as the basis for all defenses. So let me share with you a little uh, the world of the chief information security officer or the person in charge of security in the organization. They spend their days buying the latest and greatest security controls like firewalls, next generation firewalls, intrusion prevention system, data leak prevention. But still, the, in many cases, the first time they actually can tell how, how uh, secure the organization is or how safe they are is when a breach actually occurs. And uh, why is that? That's because the security controls are rarely challenged, uh, at least internally. And uh, in the meantime, the hackers can take their time, study their system, and they only need uh, one to succeed once. And we're not saying that you need to replace all your security controls. Those are great. And in fact, 95% of all breaches are avoidable through existing controls, uh, according to studies. The, pro the problem lies in how we test those controls. Uh, today, most of the most of the testing is being done manually, doing penetration testing or using red teams if you're allowed cooperation. But those tests are very expensive and are manual, and th that's why those tests are being done in large intervals, for example, every three months or six months or, or every year. And in between those tests, effectively, the chief information security officer and the organization, organization itself are actually blind regarding their security posture. Cyber terrorism, uh, cyber terrorists, cyber criminals are taking advantage of these uh, blind spots in order to launch their attacks. And uh, there are cyber, cyber weapons launched against uh, critical infrastructure, against uh, financial institutes, and against government agencies all the time. This is in fact becoming an epidemic. And uh, we at SafeReach believe we have uh, the, the vaccination for this. Our philosophy is, if the, if the hackers and the attackers are winning, let's play the hackers, let's play war games. We've built a platform that is using, uh, that, that is simulating attacks on, continuously on your, on, your organi or on your organization, starting from infiltration, attempting to, to enter into your organization, going through lateral movement, meaning trying to gain ground inside your organization and locate critical assets, and then exfiltrating the data, stealing data from your organization, which is important to you. And this is all being done continuously and simultaneously. And, uh, and the system keeps analyzing the, the data that is being transferred across the system. And, cre and we create dashboards that show you the potential impact of the attacks, allowing you to mitigate the attacks before they actually happen by the bad guys. Um, I'll show you a little how this works. This is uh, your typical uh, network diagram. Uh, we come, when we come to such an organization, we install the SafeRich manage, management system, which automatically connects to the SafeRich playbook. This contains a huge database of, of breach scenarios. Uh, those can be s trivial scenarios ca that can be executed by script kiddies, meaning anyone, anyone can download this from the internet, and all the way through government-backed uh, government sophisticated attacks, such as the ones that were uh, executed on Sony or Target, uh, etc. We then install simulators in critical locations in your network. It can be on the server farm, it can be on the users, uh, on the user's network, and it can be anywhere, even on mobile devices that people are bringing uh, to, to work. The simulators then try to uh, start to simulate a text, for example, stealing data from your organization. It can be uh, malware being downloaded into the organization trying to, to, to uh, compromise services. And all of this is happening simultaneously thousands of simulations every hour, millions of attacks every day. We, we are building actually a disruptive technology and for this we are the, the best team out there. We have Guy and Itzik, our founders. Uh, Guy is coming with uh, 15 years of experience in, uh, in uh, large enterprises and have been the, C, the Chief Security Information Officer of uh, LifePerson. Itzik is coming from the Israel Intelligence Corps and, as, and have a lot of years uh, of, uh, of being a professional hacker. The rest of the, of the executive team is coming for large corporates such as Cisco, Trustee, Imperva, and Palo Alto. And we have uh, 32 people in SafeBridge in our offices in Tel Aviv and uh, Sunnyville. And we are probably backed by Sequoia and Shlomo Kramer. We are, we are actually at war. This is a global war where cyber terrorism and, and cyber weapons are, uh, are playing a major role. At, uh, the the SafeBridge solutions allow you to 
to safely and uh, continuously monitor your, your security posture. And we have zero, zero false positives. If we are successful, so will the hacker be. So let me finish with the word of uh, Sun Tzu. If you know the enemy and you're yourself, you need not fear the results of 100 battles. Selfish is here to help you avoid that fear exactly. Thank you. An experienced field colonel is planning a preemptive attack on enemy outposts. All enemy relevant positions appear on his maps. He chooses to position one of his forces in an arbitrary position out of several possible options. The chosen position is within the range of enemy anti-tank fire. When the attack begins, the soldiers are exposed to enemy fire and suffer heavy casualties. How is it possible even when all relevant data is available, an experienced commander makes such a grave mistake. Is it possible other commanders make similar mistakes? And most important, how can technology assist in preventing such cases? I am Nadav from Smart Plans. Terror events are fast evolving and unexpected. Operational opportunities for counter-terror operations are hard to achieve and very short. Sometimes all you have is five minutes to plan your operation. Which forces to deploy, which techniques to use, where to position your forces in order to maximize mission success rates. For example, determining the optimal position of a counter-terrorism sniper takes into consideration many factors, such as distance to the target, angle, wind velocity. It requires years of experience and takes precious time to perform. Precise planning is a critical need for operational success. The, the most valuable resource planners lack is simply time. Many time-consuming um, calculations are being done nowadays manually. Many of those can be performed via artificial intelligence, which is hardly being used nowadays in current mission planning stages. GIS and 3D technologies recently introduced provide planners with more and more valuable information. However, current, technolog current technologies fail to assist the mission planning stages, for they leave the planner to manually process this ever-growing amount of information. Our solution is an AI-based planning software. We use multiple artificial intelligence solutions via tailor-made algorithms using a very simple graphic GIS user interface. Our uniqueness is that we believe in a best of breed combination between the human mind and machine artificial intelligence. This allows the planner to harness the power of artificial intelligence to perform complicated calculations while still expressing his own intuition, wide knowledge, expertise, and experience. By combining the power of the human mind and the abilities of the machine artificial intelligence, we can shorten planning time considerably. We can offer planners with more operational alternatives. We can analyze and mitigate the risk of wrong decision making. And most important, we can increase mission success rates and ultimately save lives. Why go smart plans? Because we focus on this specific problem and we do so with the agility and flexibility of a startup company because we bring together a lot of operational and technical experience, and most important, because we use knowledge from other domains such as decision support making on the medical field, 
which are hardly being used nowadays. Our team incorporates more than 20 years of hands-on operational experience and over 15 years of code, software development in the AI and medical decision support systems. In order to prove our solution, we've conducted a POC with IDF experienced colonels. In the movie, you can see how a user draws a plan, runs the analytical uh, risk assessment engine, the system then produces a set of risk-related comments, which the user can understand and explore using a, using a very intuitive user interface. The user can improve the plan accordingly, and this process is done iteratively until a perfect plan or near to perfect is completed. In the test, all of the field colonists reported a very good compatibility, coverage, and usability of the software. The example I gave in the beginning of my speech about the colonel and the loss of life did not happen in the real world, luckily. It happened during the POC. The system red flagged the decision, suggested the colonel to change the plan. He did so and saved his man's life. Our current status is that we're supported by MAFAT to continue development. Our next milestone is to deploy our solution is to develop a product for the IDF Special Forces to act as early adopters. And our company vision is to deploy our solution within army and counter-terrorism units in Israel and neighboring countries. So ladies and gentlemen, when precise planning is needed, when time is against you, and when mission failure is simply not an option, don't just plan, smart plan. Thank you very much. Hi guys, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I would like to ask you first a question, simple one. How many of you guys read more than 20 emails this morning? Nice, very good. You're doing a great job and you're helping terrorists because terrorists are using their, your email in order to penetrate your organization. There is actually a, a war going out outside. Much like in the era, era of the Cold War about 40 years ago, there is a cyber war going out there outside and it's a very silent war. We don't really know everything that's happening, why it's happening. There could be a malfunction in Bezek one day and you don't know if it was in fact a cyber attack or not. So what Votero has done and we have been uh, quoted by Inc that we have achieved the holy grail of cybersecurity by protecting from zero day attacks. The entire war out there is based on a single element, which is an exploit. And what our terrorists could do with that exploit? They could send an email to somebody in the control center of a train center. In that email, they would install a malware on his computer. And by using that malware, they could cause a train accident. Actually, they can do it from anywhere in the world. They do not need to be present at the area. This is why this is a covert war, a silent war, and doing it correctly would even make it hard to detect who did it. And actually, we can see that there is already attacks that have been done against multiple uh, governments. Just recently, the latest one is the Pakistanis attacking the Indian government. But you can see other examples like blackouts in Ukraine, uh, the Iranian attacking Canada, uh, and so on and so on. 
So actually there is a very big problem and all the cyber companies in the world understand that there is a problem. Symantec is saying that 319% increase in the number of spear phishing attacks within the last three years. And again, the number one problem is the zero day exploits, which actually a new zero day vulnerability was found every week. And the security cannot, the security vendors cannot handle this. The need is actually to protect from the undetectable. And what Votero is doing is we stop undisclosed and zero day threats from attacking your organization. We, we do that in a very simple manner to explain. Doing it is much harder and it requires understanding of each and every file format in the world. Uh, we do a process on the file in which at the end it is neutralized from any exploit in that file, giving you a safe to open version of the same file, safe to edit, and, and in this way you can prevent zero day attacks. While comparing us to other solutions, there is a thing to, to understand that antivirus today are known not to be good enough. And this is said by one of the biggest uh, security companies in the world, by Symantec. And the other solution that everybody was expecting to solve the problem was the sandbox. And actually, you can see today that in Hacking Team example, a company that was rich, they had a malware that was capable of evading any sandbox. So there is no good solution and the sandbox is not good. So you're left with what is called an active content disarm process, which is what Votero is doing. And Gartner is actually saying that this technology will be the one that would provide you the protection in the future. Our product has been out there in the market for a few years, and we have been certified by authorities in Israel. We've also won some awards in the US, and we've also been featured in the New York Times, in Forbes, in Inc., and in eWeek. All of them are related to, uh, with relation to Votero and its technology. The leadership in the company is uh, from the unit, the Israel Intelligent Corp. I was there for a few years uh, with my partner in the unit A200, uh, with Aviv Graffi. Uh, we have a sales manager already in place, and we are starting to sell in the global area. So the question is, is not if, it, if there would be an attack, it's when. And when it will happen, we would might see it as this catastrophic event. So I wish you safe travel all the time and don't open emails. <laughs> Thank you.